And his mother's like, read it. What do you have to lose? You know, so he read it, and he got excited about it. And he, he sent his mom to the library and started studying the science of mind ideas, that truly there is a consciousness that is the power and that we can use it. There is God law that obeys our demand when we believe it as it is so. And what happened was it took almost two years, but he healed completely. Impossible, you know, unexplained regression in the, at Stanford and at the Mayo Clinic. But it's a powerful example for me. His birthday is this coming Halloween. He's going to be 87. <laughs> so it's true. It really is true. What quantum physics says, what science of mind says. So this can apply to anything, right? Not just health. What about money? Oh, I don't have any, or hardly any. Or what about a lack of a job? or unhappy relationships. Well, if the electrons are really just fuzzy possibilities, waiting your observation and intention to be collapsed into a form, why not collapse them into plenty of money, a great job, and happy relationships? You have a powerful consciousness, and you can do it. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes you see people, we live in a very wonderful valley full of creativity and innovation. And so people are willing to risk a bit. And sometimes you see somebody starting a new project or a, a new idea, and they're going well, and then all of a sudden things sort of fall apart. Well, it's like anything, it takes work. So we have to keep remembering the truth. We have to keep setting our intention. We have to keep making the observation to be what we want it to be, to keep that energy and to keep those electrons reacting the way we want them to be, acting. Dr. Kusami talks a lot about consciousness. And he talks about what he calls mon monistic idealism, the, you know, that there's only one and the idealism, it basically says that everything is made of light, so electrons and photons, all the light, and that there's one consciousness in which everything resides. Well, again, this isn't a new idea, right? Plato, I remember studying Plato in high school, and the allegory of the cave and the shadows on the wall. He said things are, there's a greater reality than what the shadows appear, what circumstances show. The major religions of the world teach there is this one consciousness, whether they call it God or Allah or whatever name they call it. And I thought, and the mystics, the mystics of the ages, of course, they get their knowledge intuitively. And they, different mystics in totally different cultures, different times, have come up with the same idea. And I think that one of the Hindu mystics, Shankara, explains it well. He said, I dwell within all beings as soul, the pure consciousness, the ground of all phenomena, internal and external. I am both the enjoyer and that which is enjoyed. Science of mind, we call it consciousness, we call it God, we call it spirit. It's the all. And knowing this, that there is one infinite spirit that we all live and move and have our being in is a wonderful, comforting, empowering blessing. Knowing 
that life is more than we see, what we see, hear, smell, and taste and feel, knowing that we're one with God takes away the power of spooks, of fear. So the good news is we really can open to a greater truth. We can open to the idea that truly life can begin again every moment. And we can choose how we want to change it. We can meditate and contemplate a question, an idea, and then let it go knowing that the energy is moving and all those probabilities and possibilities that we have not seen are now welcome to be revealed in our lives. We can choose to be aware of the one consciousness with endless possibilities, limitless creativity available to us. Goswami says, meditation and creative experiences seem to be showing a shift of consciousness to the primary process of the quantum mode. Okay, my interpretation is, because <laughs> that's like, okay, let's read that one again. Uh, <laughs> let, believe me, in this book, uh, re let's read that one again. But <laughs> what I think he means. <laughs> is that we're not limited by rational, bounded thinking, but we're really open to jumps in consciousness, those quantum leaps they talk about, new awarenesses, new infinite possibilities. It's exciting. Wow, what will I create in my life tomorrow? And that our new ideas, our new focus, our new intention collapses those electrons into new circumstances. New works of art, new experiences, new joys, new health, new riches, new love. So remember, the in initial conditions do not forever determine an object's motion. If instead, every time we observe them, there's a new beginning, then the world is creative at the base level. We can scare away those spooks and fears and in their place reveal health, wealth, joy, and peace. We can continually create our lives anew. Pretty exciting news. So when you see a spook or hear a boo, don't be afraid. Remember that God is you expressing at the individual level and Love and power are the truth of you. And so it is. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.